أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى أناجي الحق في ليل لهي من أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum And welcome to this special edition of Perspective on ITV Today we are at the CBE Which is the Congress for Business and Economics Banquet At Birchwood Estate or Birchwood Conference Centre Rather in Boxburg Now tonight the theme is celebrating our heroes Our legacy and our contribution to our country And we have a very special guest in, uh, at the conference today It's Professor Connie or Khadija Molloy Assalamu Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to Perspective on ITV. Walikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Professor Molloy, Professor Khadija Molloy is currently a professor of education at the Faculty of Human Sciences at the Vahal University of Technology, where she is responsible for the establishment of a new Department of Education for teaching and training. Now, we know education plays a vital role in any young child or any young child's mind a uh, child's education or a child's life and also to inspire the mind to become what they want in the future. Now, Professor Malloy, uh, again, once again, glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do? Well, I'm a professor of education at the Vale University of Technology. I'm responsible for developing a department of teacher education. We have started this year and we are hoping to start uh, a new qualification in 2015. But in the process, I'm also interested in establishing Islam. Presently, we're in the process of having a small Jamaat Kana because there are lots and lots of Muslims within the university. Yes. Now, you say you're establishing a Jamaat Kana at uh, the Technicon. How many of your students um, are Muslim that are attending the Technicon? Presently, I have a list of about 50 of them, including staff members. But most of them come from other countries outside of South Africa. There are quite a number of them who come from Shadville yes. and in Johannesburg. But a substantial number comes from other countries. I think it's a very good initiative that you establish the Jamaat Kana, that uh, even while studying, that uh, uh, a person shouldn't forget the Salah, which is of vital importance in a Muslim's life. Well, for me, I think it is extremely important because if we have that small little prayer place, it will enable the students in between breaks to go to the, uh, you know, to the Jamaat Kana and then to offer their prayers, and particularly on Fridays, because that is a huge problem. There's nowhere to go, you know, of particularly course. for those students, because most of them do not have transport to go out, you know, and go and pray. Mm. Now, in an article by you, you quote uh, R.M. Hutchins, who said education is not to reform students or amuse them or to make them expert technicians. It is to unsettle their minds, widen their horizons, inflame their intellects, teach them to think straight if possible. Now, why emotional intelligence? I think for me, emotional intelligence is important in anyone's life. One can have education or one can be rich. But if one is not emotionally intelligent, then one can mess up many things in life. Emotional intelligence is firstly about understanding yourself, understanding that you have weaknesses and you've got strength. And if you can begin to accept yourself with your weaknesses, yeah. you need to be able to understand other people and accept them for who they are. So for me, I think that emotional intelligence is extremely important and actually it goes hand in glove with leadership. Good leaders are those that are emotionally intelligent. Yes. Now for, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, in layman's terms, what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is about being able to deal with yourself, with your anger, being able to suppress your anger when you are angry, being able to control your emotions, but at the same time being able to understand other people's emotions, also understanding that people are different and because of that you learn how to deal with different people as a, a, according to their different dispositions. Now, with emotional intelligence, you're saying uh, dealing with anger, how to control your anger. Would this relate to, uh, say, domestic abuse at home as well? Definitely. Well, domestic abuse is a different issue. But I think uh, one of the things that we are taught in the Holy Quran is sabr, yes. to be patient, you know, 
to be patient and then to pray. Mm. So if one prays and one is patient, despite abuse, one can, to some extent, be able to, 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 you know, to be emotionally intelligent and accept one's situation. But it doesn't mean that one has to suffer because Allah says we need to have sober, you know. You can speak to other people, but you need to learn how to understand those things that make people angry. And then you try to control yourself and you try not to do those things that anger other people. Of course. Yes. Now, we've seen a lot of protests uh, with regard to service delivery in many of the townships. Uh, can, can these residents or these people be taught uh, to control their anger or to deal with these protests in a more, uh, in a more amicable way? I think that is a different level of discussion, that one, because yeah. one of the things that I teach is change management. Yes. We normally say that change is very difficult, and we normally say that why is it difficult? Because it is complex. There are too many processes that are complex. So if one were to look at the behavior of those people that are, are toitoing in the township, yeah. one can at this moment not uh, equate it to how one should be emotionally intelligent because it is different factors that, you know, uh, fuel those kinds of emotions and the kinds of anger. But also, one should also understand there's a difference between an educated pe person and mm. an illiterate. Of course, yes. But also, there's a difference between a person who believes and one who does not believe. Mm. So the situations are different and then it's quite complex and one would not outrightly say that, you know, they should be emotionally intelligent because a hungry man... Mm -hmm. You can never say that a hungry man should be, pe uh, should be patient, but a person who also does not have a toilet, a person mm. who does not have a, a, a decent living room, mm. such a person can not understand what patience means. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk education. Uh, education plays a vital role in a child's life. How do you emphasize the important role a parent or the role of parents should play in educating their children? I think for us in particular as Muslim, education is significant because the first words that were given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were Ikra, or the word was Ikra, read. Mm. So read, read can be uh, interpreted in, dif in different ways, but yes. for me as a scholar, read means to read so that you know and understand. Course, yes. Yeah. And education is important because, again, in the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says so, that so. the ink of a scholar is stronger, is mightier than the blood, than the blood of a martyr. That on its own means that education is fundamental. So it is important for parents to themselves read, to be educated, even if it means homeschooling, you know, mm -hmm. teaching your child at home, because number one, to be able to read the Quran, you have to be able to read. Education is so vital, it's so important, particularly for us as Muslims today. And I always say to people, if Muslims were to take over the world, yes. We would need educated people to be able to run the country. Mm. Uh, your thoughts and comments quickly on uh, the state of education currently in South Africa. Much has been said about, you know, the dysfunctional state of education in South Africa, given that, you know, we measure it according to the res metric results. Yes. And they seem to be disappointing. But also when one looks at newspapers or the media, we normally see teachers going into the streets, in, uh, you know, striking, you know, uh, abdicating their uh, responsibilities. Mm. So it, it, it is sad, it is a sad state. And if one travels, if one goes to other countries, I've been to different countries in Africa, let me just go to Africa, not even overseas, in yes, Senegal, yes. where children go to school from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm. at night, you know, just sitting with no resources. So it, it's such a pity because I believe that you know, education, being a teacher is a calling, it's a yes. vocation. And it's an entrustment from Allah. So if I'm an entrusted with, with, with something, with a function, I need to be able to perform. Of course, yes, so I think that, you know, it is a personal responsibility for each person who educates to be able to do their duty, to, to, to perform their function effectively. Yes, absolutely. We're speaking to Professor Khadija Molloy and we're at the Birchwood Conference Center in Boxburg where the CBE, the Congress of Business Economics Banquet, is taking place. We're going to go for a short break and then thereafter when we return, inshallah, we will be continue or continue speaking to Professor Khadija Molloy. Stay tuned. <laughs> Fakshi 
Welcome back to Perspective on ITV. I'm Faisal Patel. This evening, we're speaking to Professor Khadija Molloy. We're at the Congress of Business and Economics Banquet in Birchwood in Boxburg. You're welcome to interact with me by sending me a mail on faisal at itvnetworks.tv or drop me a tweet at faisy143. Alternatively, on a comment on Facebook forward slash Faisal Patel. Now, Professor Molloy, before the break, we were speaking about uh, the Jamaat Khanna at the Val Technicon and uh, also the importance of education. Now, to follow a career in technology or science, mathematics plays an extremely and critical role. Research by the Basic Education Department has shown that many teachers lack the knowledge they need to teach their subject as a result, often missed out on critical parts of the syllabus. Now, uh, they don't feel confident about it. How do we overcome this? How do the teacher become the master of his subject so that he can instill this education or the subject he teaches, particularly related to mathematics, onto the various students, the amount of students that he got in class? What the Department of uh, Higher Education has done now was to review a teacher qualification. Yes. We've now introduced a new qualification, a Bachelor of Education, which is a four-year qualification. There are different streams. One can be a teaching, the other one can be um, educational management and leadership. But the emphasis, we are I'm, uh, actually involved in one of those um, 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 qualifications. Yes. What we're going to do, we're going to specialize in particularly in science, math and technology. Yes. But now what's going to happen, a student who studies at any one of the universities can be able to articulate and study in another university in order to lift the quality of mathematics. What has been lacking has been the content. They call it pedagogical content knowledge. Mm -hmm. So when a teacher uh, trains now for four years or even for five years, it might be extended to five years, they will be then given the, the skills and the knowledge to be able to master the content and the pedagogical and the disciplinary knowledge of mathematics okay. and science. Okay, I just want to digress a little bit away from this. Um, do you think uh, that possibly that uh, assuming you take a classroom with 30 or 40 students or even less, uh, the instructional language, whether it be English, Afrikaans or maybe an African language, is a vital role, can play a vital role in possibly the child not understanding the subject that the teacher is teaching? Well, that is an ongoing debate, you know, the uh, linguistic debate. A lot of people are saying that, researchers are saying that, you know, you need to teach a, a child in a language that the child knows. Yes. Because in that way, a child is able to master the, uh, the content of whatever subject is being uh, presented to them. Mm -hmm. And particularly in our black schools, our students fail because there's a problem with language, with English as a medium of instruction. Of course, yes. While that is important, I also have a, rev a re reservation because when one travels internationally, all over, you know, yes, yes. English becomes the D language that is used. Absolutely. Yes, so language is important. But what is normally said is that the, the student has to be given access. They call it pedagogical access. In mm. other words, they have, we, teachers need to train children to be able to access that language for the particular subject that is being taught. Absolutely. Yes. Now, why I ask the question is because mm. sometimes a student may be very fearful. You know, he wants yes. to excel in yes. a particular subject, yes. but he's yes. so scared because mm -hmm. maybe the teacher is not explaining very well yeah. or the teacher yes. is not maybe eloquent yeah. or fluent in that particular yes. language. Yeah. So the point that you made is quite pertinent, yes. that a yes. child needs to be mm -hmm. instructed yes. in a language yes. that he yes. understands very well yes. as well. Yes. Now, yes. over 500,000 pupils or learners mm -hmm. wrote matric examinations this year. The pass rate for the last year was just over 70%. How do we improve this? I mean, 70% uh, mm. uh, mm. pass rate, that means 30% are not going to make it. Yeah. How do we push up this figure or make this figure explode to say 80 or 90 or even 100%? I think for me, it's a matter of commitment. You know, it's a matter of commitment. And that is commitment from the teacher. Mm. Because the teacher is one who is at the center of that teaching. But at the same time, there has to be a, a relationship between the school and the parent and the home. Yes, yes. So the teachers, the parents have to support teachers, but the teachers have to do their bit. Mm -hmm. So if I do my work well, if I teach well, there's no way in which my students can fail. Mm -hmm. So we really need to be committed. You know, we may blame 
a lack of resources, we may blame a lack of parental involvement, but it is the teacher's function to do their work. You need, uh, one of the things that uh, has been done, we are trained as teachers. We are trained to, to, to teach different students uh, with different intellectual capabilities. Mm -hmm. So you need to educate yourself, and that is why we speak about lifelong learning, that as a teacher, you collaborate with other teachers. Mm -hmm. Where I have a problem, I can always go and seek assistance from other course, teachers yes. to help me so that together, as a collaborative force, we can then be able to assist. But for me, it's commitment. Commit. If you are committed to your work, nothing is impossible. Uh, another question that I want to take from or I want to ask you is do you think the standard of education uh, uh, post apartheid era is maybe say I'm um, and I and I stand, stand corrected maybe of a little bit of a lower grade than what we had before in a way one can say that you know I mean even the quality of life yes. I mean even values most mm. of us have lost our values uh, and I don't know where the problem is, you know, mm -hmm. but I remember somebody said uh, that once teachers are unionized, then there'll be problems. <laughs> yes. We were educated during the apartheid era. It wasn't good education, but at least mm. teachers were in class on a daily basis from 8 to 2 o'clock or from 8 to 4 o'clock. Yes, but once the teacher is not in the classroom, no form of education will take place. So for me, if one has to compare, I would say that the conditions were probably better then, despite you know, as the segregation is, you know, disparities course, yes, in terms yes. of education. Because at least teachers were there. Yeah. We memorized. I mean, we did our mental arithmetic. We were there. We worked. We wrote. But where students do not write, where students are without teachers, really, I, I don't think the quality is. We are, uh, I think we are failing our students. What inspired the question is because if you take somebody to want to become a doctor, and if he, he needs to take maths and science and maybe physics as well. You can't get 30% to pass because as a doctor you need to get it 100% right. Yeah. So it is disconcerting that even even some of even the pass rate has been reduced in certain subjects. What's your comment on that? Well, I suppose this is why some good students will choose better schools. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, those who want to become doctors will go to better schools. They wouldn't go to schools where uh, uh, percentage passes are going to be uh, reduced. Mm -hmm. They'll go to private schools. They go, go to ex model C schools. Yeah, okay. So that is where the best students go to. Mm. Okay, times have been tough financially. Uh, we know the ethos is coming in, the fuel price is fluctuating, uh, and that's for most of most people that affects uh, family life. So many students with great potential that got inspiring minds uh, will miss the opportunity to go to study at university. Should students be encouraged to pay for themselves or skip varsity completely altogether? No, they shouldn't because there are many, many, many bursaries that are offered. Many bursaries, uh, one of them is called the um, NEFSA's National Fund. It's, it's from the government. There are many ways. There are even loans. Mm -hmm. So there's no way in which a student can skip uh, varsity because there are no funds because there are lo loans and, and and there are also many 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 bursaries but also there are many opportunities overseas of course, yes. so there, there's different different ways in which students can really be encouraged to go to university because without education I mean nowadays one is nowhere yeah, no, absolutely. yeah. from universities to technicons to SET colleges um, if you were to give advice with regards to a student that's got great potential obviously he'll go to university yes. but obviously the affordability comes into issue because university fees over a year is quite exorbitant um, if somebody is on a limited budget or somebody has the means to go and get an education but maybe not go to a top university what would you recommend well, they, they should try. They should really try. They should really try and get a loan and get to a top university. But, but fortunately now, there are no longer any technicons in South Africa. They are 20, they've been merged. Yes. There are 23 universities. I, I think our university, the value is one of the cheapest in South Africa in yes. terms of fees. They can always select which one is more affordable. But even in, in among all the universities, there are loans. There are other means that can be used to assist students with their tuition fees. Okay. Yeah. I must tell you that also I'm a very big fan of the late Steve Jobs. Now, he was a college dropout. Right? Yet he built a multi-billion dollar company. If the youth of today have a similar desire, how would you advise them? Say they don't want to go to university. They say, you know what, I've got this brilliant idea. I've got entrepreneurial skills. I want to make the next South Africa's iPhone. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them? Well, I would advise them to follow their uh, desires, follow their wish. And I mean, on TV, there is so much going on, you know. Yes, yes. I mean, this very forum, we are here today with businesses. They can get advice from different uh, businesses. I mean, there are different, even Muslim businesses, you know, 
um, so many of them, Kahiso, all of them, they are all over. So let them follow that whatever their heart aspiration is. Okay, we're speaking to Professor Khadija Molloy. Uh, you tuned to, to Perspective. Uh, you're welcome to send me a comments, your comments, your feedback on Faisal at itvnetworks.tv. Drop me a tweet at Faisy143. Alternatively on facebook.com forward slash Faisal Patel. We're going to go for a break. And then inshallah after that, we're going to continue speaking to Professor Molloy. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Perspective on ITV. I'm Faisal Patel. This evening we're speaking to Professor Khadija Molloy and we're at the CBE banquet in Birchwood in Boxburg. You're welcome to interact with me on Faisal at ITVnetworks.tv. Send me a tweet at Faisy143, alternatively on facebook.com forward slash Faisal Patel. Now, Professor Molloy, we were speaking about education and the importance of education. I need to know, or I got a question, what are some of the challenges that the youth face today? I think one of the greatest challenges that youth face today is uh, drugs. Um, all over in schools, children go to schools with drugs. Mm -hmm. And I think also exposure to too much, um, you know, media with uh, sex and all those things, you know, things course, that yes. we are not exposed to. Mm -hmm. I think these things affect uh, the, the youth negatively. Mm -hmm. And I think um, less focus is on education, on reading and on going to libraries. Mm. And whilst the media is good, technology is good, I think youth do not want to read. They would write Google uh, stuff, you know, on internet, mm. from the cell phones. Yeah. So these are some of the challenges that are really, and, and also, um, you know, one of the greatest challenges is crime as well. Mm. No one feels safe anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, now, our Madiba, our dear Madiba, who fought for our freedom for over 20 years, going to be 20 years next year, um, he was an exceptional leader. From his boyhood days at, in, a, in a Eastern Cape to becoming president of the country, I mean, our freedom, what a beautiful freedom that we enjoy today. Um, you know, he was, an, like I said, ex an exceptional leader. What qualities make a great leader? What are the qualities? Let's take use Madiba as a reference. What qualities make an exceptional leader? I think one of the greatest qualities is actually called a charismatic leader. He loves people. Yes. I think for me, Madiba is outstanding in terms of his love and uh, in terms of principle. He's got principles, he's a clean man, he's tidy, mm -hmm. he's upright, and he's, he's straightforward. He's got empathy. That is what makes a leader and humility. Yes. One of the greatest uh, qualities of it is humility. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are, in what situation of leadership, if you are not humble, mm -hmm. you may have the greatest vision, but without humility, people will undermine that vision. So that is what Madiba has. And also his caring. The fact that you know he's been gi uh, given money from all over the world, yes. and then he keeps on putting it into into different charities. That is what most of us have to learn in terms of leadership. It's about charity, caring, forgiveness, yes. loving, and punctuality. Mm. He did inspire a nation, didn't he? I mean, for the Rugby World Cup, when the whole country was united, everybody shouting in the streets and celebrating the victory of the Rugby World Cup. And uh, I mean, we were looking at uh, uh, one of the movies that came out, I think, uh, where it shows the World Cup. Um, yes. Invictus, yeah. I think it was, yeah. where how he inspired uh, yes. Francois Pinar yes. to, to go and win this World Cup yeah. for us. I mean, it's truly inspirational, yes. isn't yes, it? Yes, that is true. That is so okay. true. We had the launch of the Congress of Business and Economics, who empowers people with entrepreneurial skills. What are your thoughts and comments about uh, entrepreneurial skills and the good work that uh, the CBE is doing? Well, I think it's doing a massive job and uh, it has an impact because, uh, you know, people normally speak about a uh, lack of jobs, yes. you know, formal jobs. And uh, if one has entrepreneurial skills, one can be able to generate you know, money from the smallest unthinkable thing, mm. even just picking up papers, you know. Of course, yes. So I think for me, this has a huge impact and, and people should really think out of the box mm. and be able to see that, you know, with every uh, opportunity, there yeah. is success. success. You, uh, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, now tonight's theme is tribute to our heroes, our legacy and contribution to our country. Um, that's the theme for tonight. Your thoughts and comments on uh, South Africa's rich legacy and heroes. 
Well, I think it's a great, it just shows uh, what potential Allah has given different people in their, in their different spheres. Mm. And I think that each and every person is important. Each and every person is a hero. Mm. You know, some of us may have education, others have other qualities as well. So every person is a hero. And I think it's important for each one of us to recognize that in our own way, you know, even if I'm a domestic woman, mm -hmm. you know, looking, cooking after, uh, looking after my home, you know, looking after my husband and my children, that on its own, that's being a hero. All of us are heroes in a way. But it's really um, uh, appreciated that, you know, people that have done other things, mm -hmm. which may seem to be outstanding, of are course, tonight yeah. rewarded and, and appreciated. Mm -hmm. Professor Monoy, before we conclude, a message to our viewers and all the future leaders, uh, some words of encouragement, of inspiration. Well, I would say that no matter how bleak the future may lead, there is always a tomorrow. And I believe in what he said in the Quran that within every difficulty there is, or after every difficulty there is. So we need to be positive. We need to be grateful for every minute that Allah has given us. Because, you know, the past has gone. What we have is, is the moment. The future is unknown, yes. is in Allah's hands. Mm -hmm. So do your best in whichever way you are and wherever you are. Professor Molloy, thank you so much for coming on to uh, Perspective on ITV. We wish you all the success for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for your words of inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I hope the youth of today can extract some of that knowledge and some of that words of inspiration to become great leaders of tomorrow. Jazakallah. Thank you once again for coming on to ITV. I'm in Jazakallah for the opportunity. Okay. That was Professor Khadija Malloy. She was speaking to us. We're broadcasting from the CBE in Pershut in Boxburg. Uh, we've come to an end of another edition of Perspective. Join us again next week, inshallah, where we will bring you news or interviews that's making headlines. You're welcome to interact with me on Faisal at uh, itvnetworks.tv or don't forget send me a tweet on at phasey143 or on facebook.com forward slash Faisal Patel. For myself, Faisal Patel and the great team here at ITV Networks, Fia Manillah, Assalamu Alaikum, Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. <laughs> سليم يطلب التقوى أناجي الحق في ليل بهيم أصدق النجوى وأدعو الله من قلب سليم يطلب التقوى إلهي صرت في ظرف عصيب فاكشف البلوى فيا ربي أنا عبد لرد الطيب لا يقوى أعن